Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, um, How to Manage Your GDPR Compliance and Website Security. My name is Louise Stokes, and I am the Marketing Director here at Digital Leaders. And this week, we are running GDPR Week along with our partners, including Cynation, where we run lots of different events around the country and online, like this webinar um, around GDPR and getting ready um, before May. So you can check out um, the website there, digileaders.com forward slash GDPR dash week, or um, check out some of the activity on Twitter, hashtag GDPR Week or hashtag Digileaders. Just a few guidelines before we start. Um, if everyone could please mute themselves during the presentation to avoid any background noise, noisy colleagues, barking dogs, etc. Um, and if you have any questions, to send them through the chat box there to either my account, Louise Stokes, or to the Digital Leaders account. Um, so send your questions through as we go, and then um, we will have a bit of Q&A time um, after the presentation. Um, also, to let you know, the, the webinar slides and audio will be fully recorded today and we will email you all after the session with a link to that recording um, and to any other resources that are mentioned during the presentation. So the General Data Protection Regulation, which with threats of detrimental fines, poses a major, major challenge for most organisations. Despite 86% of organisations in Europe identifying GDPR as their key focus, many fear they won't have full GDPR compliance in time for the 25th of May 2018 deadline. In this webinar today, Shadi A. Razak, who is a data security and privacy expert and chief technology officer at Cynation, and James Nelson, head of UK channel at AppCheck, will go through how to prioritise and manage your organisation's online footprint in order to be GDPR compliant and how to identify your digital digital footprints, critical vulnerabilities, prioritize them and build your remediation plan. So just to introduce our presenters today in a bit more detail, Shadi A. Razak, CTO of Cynation, is a cybersecurity and business digitalization expert with strong foundation in business and IT strategy. Shadi has over 15 years experience in information security management, data privacy and protection information governance and compliance, working for blue chip companies, government organisations, financial services and SMEs. And we also have James Nelson, who is the head of UK channel for AppCheck Limited. Through his time at AppCheck, he has extensive knowledge on securing web applications through working with some of the UK's largest companies. So it's my pleasure now to hand over to our presenters. So I will just unmute them and have a hand over the keyboard and mouse controls. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Lucy. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Louise, appreciate it. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you, you have your lunch with you and you are ready for a, an exciting and thrilling GDPR event uh, and a webinar to today. Um, as we said, we're going to focus on how to manage your GDPR compliance with uh, website security. Um, uh, I'm going to start a bit by touching on a few areas of GDPR and its relation to website security. Then my uh, colleague James, uh, our second speaker, he will discuss how their tool helps you actually to do a number of assessments that near GDPR. Then I'll explain how you will be able to manage automatically your compliance process for your applications and platforms. Um, and for today, the agenda is what, as, as I said, it's more of the ABC of GDPR, its relation with online business, whether if that was an e-commerce website, a membership, or a comparison website, or just a general platform for an organization, how to get your online business ready, for GDPR and how you also maintain your GDPR status. So uh, without keeping long, we, we, we've all heard about GDPR. and We have a GDPR fatigue 
So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on what is GDPR. I'll just touch base on some areas that will lead and summarize what it is for a lot of the, of the, of the listeners. Um, GDPR is a quite heavy type of legal documentation. You have 88 pages uh, that include, that covers 99 articles and 173 recitals that all are using legal yeah. charges. Yeah. Which is nothing wrong with that, but all of those, all of these jargons are not understandable for the common user, um, which is yourself or your clients. Hence, it's important to look at it in a different perspective. And the reason why GDPR is important for a lot of organizations, it's a great regulation for businesses because it allows you to capturize on an opportunity by creating the link of compliance and cybersecurity at the same time, integrating them. You are nowadays living in a full integrated world where you know Amazon, Google, um, all of those big organizations have information about you that is collected through using their own platform and services. And the same applies to your users in that sense. They will, you will know a lot of information about it. Hence, it's really important to link those two sides of the coin together in order to ensure that your competitive advantage is maintained, uh, especially in the digital economy. And that's where the strength of GDPR become. Now, the aim of it is to simplify it for businesses. You'll have one regulation in across Europe as well as the world. Um, a lot of uh, international um, organization and world uh, countries are actually addressing now their data privacy regulation to match GDPR in some areas. Um, it, it is the same rules. There's no difference between if you are a data processor or a data controller in the sense if you are collecting the data or you are a third party who's processing that data. Um, originally, the GDPR was um, free in the sense as you don't have to register yourself like what we used to do with the Data Protection Act. However, that is discretionary up to the supervisory authorities, which the ICO uh, uh, announced that that is not true for us in the UK. We'll still have to fill that form and identify where we are uh, regarding GDPR. As are we compliant or are we in the process for it? And we have to submit the check of the 40 quid every year. Now, the benefits for it for a business is a huge. You have one regulation that will allow you to work in 28 countries. So that is great. Um, it will help you to reduce your third party risk. And that is hugely important, especially when we're talking about integrated world, where your risk is not yours anymore. It's actually a mix between you and all your suppliers, your partners, and your third parties. For customers or citizens, it is quite powerful because it put them in the driving seat. They decide how your business will handle their data. Now, not adhering to that have a big consequences and big fines from a two to four percent of your World War turnover or 10 to 20 million. However, um, it, don't worry about that as a consequences, and I know you won't hear that by a lot of people because all the supervisory authority, or the majority of them, not all of them, the majority of them, including the ICO, which is the UK one, have clearly said that if you provide us an evidence of reasonable effort that has been done to ensure data is protected, and you have done your best to inform your, your data subjects, you will not be compromised. Um, in the sense you're not you're not going to be fine apologies uh, those are huge fines and this is quite important and the main idea is gdpr focus on three areas transparency duty of care and due diligence transparency as you need to be very transparent with your clients citizen employees partners of how you are handling the data and what you are doing with the duty of care is you need to put 
all the countermeasures and the protection procedures in place from a technology perspective, but also from an organizational perspective in order to take care of that data. And the due diligence is about you checking with your suppliers, with the people who will have access to that data from your third party and partners, that they have done their duty of care to that data. And they ensure the transparency for you to see it. And this is really, really important for an organization. And those are the areas that GDPR focus on. You won't find that in any of the documentation out there. You won't find that any of, in, in any of the others. Because the majority of the white papers that we have seen outside or have been published over the past few years focus on in reflecting what the regulations say. In other words, taking the legal jargons as itself and the main principles. However, for you as a business, those are the main three core principles that you need to focus on while you are embarking on your GDPR project. And the reason why they are important, because 70% of data security and breaches nowadays in the world that we live on, and, and we have heard about the ICO and the student loans company yesterday being used for mining bitcoins, actually is impacting us and it's affecting us. So most of those breaches are coming from third parties and partners that we deal with, who by 25th of May, 2018, you need to run a due diligence on them to ensure that they are GDPR ready and they have implemented the right security measures for the data. And the reason for that security measures for the data is that 40% of current security uh, breaches that happens through the supply chain is coming from web vulnerabilities is from APIs or using certain portals and integrating different services. An example of it, the Ecofax and the FedEx, as well as the Department of Work and Pension back in the days in, in the early 2000s. And I love the FedEx example. I think my, my colleague uh, James will actually talk about the Ecofax vulnerabilities, but for FedEx, the, the loss of 30 million uh, data records of people, of their clients, came through a very small accountancy firm in Ukraine and through zero. So it is really, really important that you have done your due diligence and ensure that your third parties have done the duty to care. And that's what Signation is all about as our organization. We help businesses to improve their ecosystem, their security ecosystem and their compliance ecosystem, manage it. Now, GDPR on online business is really important. And, and this is a quite an important um, slide because you have five main, so the GDPR have a total of 11 chapters. For you as an organization, you need to focus on the first five chapters. And actually as an online business, or to, follow, to, to address your web presence, you need to focus on chapters two, three, four, and five mainly. And the main idea of that is trying to help you to address the needs and, and be ready for the 25th of May and the compliance. And as you can see, most of these, are, these chapters covers data subject rights, the transfer of personal data between different cloud service providers, between different countries, uh, between different APIs, and the roles and responsibilities of you as a controller or a processor of the data. And in, in any way that you will do, I think we are missing one slide. No. And any approach that you're gonna do is, in order to get your business ready for, the, for GDPR, is you'll always need to start with a discovery phase or you need to start with your data protection, impact assessment and privacy impact assessment. And these are really critical and important. Nothing new, and I'm sure that you've heard that a lot. Now the difference is here that when you are running your, your impact assessment, you need to focus on two, Areas. So you need to run that assessment twice, in my opinion, or take a, 
a two parallels approach. One that focuses on your organizational business process or what happened behind the scenes. And then the other one focuses on your websites and applications. And that is important because your websites and applications, uh, whether online or offline, they are the touch points and the processing points of the data. And they are the tools that help the business process to function. Now, following your impact assessment and identifying um, the weak points of, of your system or the weak points in your process and the high-risk one, you approach the privacy documentation and you create for your own process the right policies as well as for your applications and your websites the right notices in order to inform users or clients of how their data will be uh, stored, how their data will be processed, who will have access to it, and what is the functionality that they will, uh, what is the, the capacity that they will have access to your data. Now from that, you, then you will decide on what type of principle as privacy principles that you need to implement into your organization, uh, from statements, uh, training, awareness, uh, certain type of processes, privacy by design, privacy by default, as well as privacy techniques for your software and application as an authentication, for example, um, or encryption. And usually when you start with your data impact assessments is you go through three phases. The first one is about data discovery, and the second one is about risk assessment, and the third one is about taking decisions on how to mitigate these risks, which will feed into your privacy policies and their privacy notices, and then from there leads towards your technique and principles that they are implemented. And most of the time when you start with your data discovery, it's really important for your your online presence and i'm and i'm going to talk on the discovery here just on the web and the application not on the well, on the business process is you map your digital footprint as you can see on the screen there's an example of mapping your digital footprint a lot of us we use third party a lot of us we use cloud service providers that will host our websites our applications and our solutions now most of them they have distributed um, storage and they run distributed operations to load the balancing. So most of the time you will find your application and your data are being scattered around the world in different locations and you would need to understand where that happened. And we have seen incident with, them, with some client that they are using one of the big providers as a cloud service providers and they have clearly signed in the, in the contract and the SLA that it needs to be only stored in Europe, and processed in Europe. However, they have found by using one of our tools or a lot of other tools out there that help you to do that mapping for the digital footprint, that their data is being transmitted to China and then from China is being transmitted again back to Europe to be processed. So there's that duration of transmission of transition of the data outside of Europe that's quite important for you that you need to know. And after you have done your footprint, you define the data that is flowing through that footprint. What is going as a personal identifying information or special category type of data, financial records, health records, that it's flowing around and what type of the business that it's linked to. And then you start to classify your data as this is critical to the business, this is top secret for you, this is public, it's available in the public, you know, in that sense. And you create, as you can see here in the background, also a map of your data flow. And this map of the data flow is quite important because it shows how your data is going through your business process and the different applications that you are using. That can be your e-commerce website, your uh, carter, for example, your payment system, your payment gateway, your banks, uh, your stores, your third party who's going to do the logistics. 
And the coloring that you can see is really important because that helps you to identify where are the high risk and where are the low risk areas. When you conduct your, your risk assessment, by after defining the vulnerabilities that compromise your digital footprints, and that's where tools like AppChat, for example, helps you to identify what are the most common type of vulnerabilities that you are facing. And then from that, you build your risk profile for your data. Now, it's quite important that you understand when you are building your risk profile of the data, the type of the data that you are handling and the context of that data. And that context also comes both for the data itself as how you are collecting it, how you are processing it, but what is the context of that data into your business operation as well, and how critical it is for you. And you build your risk matrix. Uh, based on that. And these type of risk metrics are and risk ratings are widely available, a lot of them available for free. You can download them from different locations or you can use some of the paid one through certain tools that is available out there uh, from us or from other organizations. And that's where it leads me towards James in order to take control from here and explain to you how you can run a number of tests on your web application, assess that risk of your data and your digital footprint and on a continuous basis and in an automatic way. James? Thanks, Shadi. Really appreciate that. So, uh, James from AppCheck here. Hopefully, everybody can, uh, can understand my uh, northern accent. So, uh, I'll, I'll do my best to be as clear as possible. So, yeah, that, that leads really nicely on to the kind of app check side of things, Shadi. I really do appreciate that. So um, I guess where we're looking at, what I'm specifically going to try and get across in, in, in the few slides I'm going to go to kind of um, with Shadi is, is looking specifically at the risk around your website and web application. I'll try and contextualize that a little bit, why, um, why it's important, and then some of the things that we can kind of do to help with that side of things as well. Just to again, to context, contextualize a little bit more, obviously Cyanation and, and, and Shadi, the guys there are the GDPR experts. You know, us at AppCheck, we don't at any point claim to be GDPR experts, but we know we can play a part in helping with a small part of it. So I just, before I kind of get started onto the slides, I just wanted to kind of make that, make that point. So first, first slide, okay? So looking at some statistics on web applications and, and relating that to GDPR, um, this is 2016, 2017, the, the report came out back in the last year. The, the, the statistics are very, very similar, so these are still very relevant. Um, out of external data breaches, 40% of data breaches came through web app attacks. So when you think about that, um, and to put even more context around that, data breaches split between your external and internet, internal network is split about 80, 20, 75, 50, uh, 20, 75, 25, depending on which statistics you look at. Um, so within that, the largest proportion is external, and then 40% is web app attacks. Now, you can see there's a lot of incidents through web apps, and 908 were confirmed with data, data disclosure. So I guess when you're looking at this from your, when you're planning for your GDPR, it's about, you know, prioritizing as a business, are you guys holding data? Is there, is there somewhere within the web, on the website that you're holding somebody's information that could potentially be accessed through a web app or a vulnerability that a hacker could exploit. Um, and that's what you need to think about. Where is your biggest risk? And look at your website, look at where you're holding data and look in, into that because it might be something that you don't expect. Um, and that's why you know, having something that you can do on an ongoing basis really helps. Um, so, so next slide, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples before I kind of talk about, about app checking and any kind of depth really. And the first one was the Equifax tag. Now, these, these statistics, you know, vary depending on which, which, uh, which newspaper you read and all the rest of it. But this is, this is one that, this, these are some of the things that we put together on, on this. So within that, obviously Equifax, given what they do, um, the biggest thing for them more than anything else for me is, 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 is brand image. You look, 143 million bits of data were stolen. The hack was through a web application. It was Apache Struts, um, discovered on the 8th of March, okay? The hack is believed to have taken place on May 13th. Now, there's conflicting 
kind of reports on whether that actual the, the vulnerability was picked up or not by Equifax. But obviously, you, you know, you don't want to kick a company when they're down because obviously they've been unfortunately dragged through the mud a little bit when this happened. Um, but at the same time, there was something there that was known um, and relatively simple to fix, um, and it wasn't, and it wasn't. Um, and it's, a, you know, large cost in terms of fines to the company. But the biggest one, as I mentioned before, is how damaging it's been to the brand image. You know, Equifax, they're, they're known for, for this, you know, holding data and, and checking into people's um, kind of credits and stuff like that. So in its very nature, it's, it's really not ideal that, um, that they were exploited through, through a vulnerability because of the kind of sensitive information that they do hold. Um, now, it, you know, this kind of case does show that doing regular checks and, and, and making sure things that making sure things are checked upon on a regular basis really, really will benefit a business. Um, because, you know, if this had been checked on a regular basis and remediated, it potentially wouldn't have happened. Um, I mean, you can never say never, but it, it is a very good example of that. So that's one example, obviously, where it's something's been discovered about keeping up to date and doing things on an ongoing basis. Now, the next example I'm going to give you is another side of, of the GDPR coin, I, I guess, as such, because that one's about regularity and, and being able to show the, 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 the idea that you've been proactive. The Michael Page data breach, which um, this happened um, in December 2015, um, this was more around looking at whose responsibility was it to check for a vulnerability within a web application. Now, this shows that, you know, in this example, Capgemini were the hosting provider. Um, and when this happened, Michael Page publicly said, you know, Capgemini were looking, looking after this for us, the security side of things. But the fact, that, the fact of the matter is that was it Capgemini's responsibility when it's a Michael Page branded application? And there's always been a little bit of uncertainty around this. And, you know, when, when I speak to, you know, clients about this, it's one of the things that we, you know, we, we get a little bit of pushback on. My hosting provider will look after this. My third party developer will look after my application security, my website security. And GDPR has, has made this a lot clearer. And it's, it, if it's your asset, if it's your name on that website or web, or web application, then it's your responsibility to make sure it's secure. So by just pointing the finger and going, somebody else is, is looking after that won't be enough. You need to go beyond that and making sure that you're doing as much as you possibly can within your means to, 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 check, to check for vulnerabilities and, and make sure that things are kind of kept on top of on a, on, on a regular basis. I've got a little, um, a little graphic here because I, I just like the fact that, um, and it's quite, it's quite hard to see, but if you can see this little gray line here, I'm just trying to get, trying to, to get across trends here more than anything else. So if you look at kind of actual data breaches where data was, uh, was actually gained, um, this gray line represents the percentage um, in 2015. And then this represents the number in 2016. Um, and that has pretty much stayed the same in, um, in 2017 as well. So, you know, web app attacks are going to continually be, you know, continually be one of the biggest threats to you as a business. And you need to just make sure you're doing as much as you can within your means to check things on a regular basis. So what is vulnerability scanning? Um, you know, some people on the call may well have heard of it. Some of you may, be, may well be doing it. Um, others may have, you know, no idea what it is. So let's kind, of, let's kind of strip it back to the very basics to begin with. So essentially what it is, it's a computer program, software, and sometimes it can be on-premise. Um, to look at and, your, and assess your computer systems, network, and applications for weaknesses. So we're looking, uh, in app check sense, we're looking for vulnerabilities that could, be, could lead to an exploitation, um, whether that be something as simple as somebody changing the way the old website looks, all the way through to a full data breach. So there are all sorts of different variables. There's loads of vulnerabilities out there and you know, loads of different ways of kind of finding those. It allows organizations to be proactive in discovering vulnerabilities. Now, that 
and I'll get onto this in a bit more in a later slide, that's a really key thing in terms of GDPR. Proactivity and, and being as, you know, doing as much as you possibly can is, is, is a key thing, really. And that's what the kind of message that we get across. Look, there's going to be a lot you need to think about in terms of GDPR. And, you know, Shadi and Signation can help you to prioritize where that might be. But if website and web app security is one of those, being proactive and using a vulnerability scanner is, is going to be really, really helpful. It also will give you, alongside that kind of proactive approach, remedial advice. So the most important thing, really. So not just showing you where a, a potential exploit is, but showing you how to fix it and putting that into you know, language that a developer or someone within the infrastructure team would, would be able to understand. Overall, it reduces risk and gives an overview of an org organization's threat landscape. Now, again, we would never say, you know, do vulnerability scanning, you'll be unhackable. There's no, there's, no, there's no such thing as that. People spend millions and millions on different products and services. All you can do as much as you can to reduce that risk. But obviously it makes sense if you're doing something on a regular basis, like a vulnerability scanning tool, something that you have control over, then that's obviously going to help on that side of things rather than it being, you know, maybe a one-off test that you're doing once a year or potentially maybe not doing much security testing at all. So it's a nice cost-effective way of being able to do stuff on a more regular basis. And finally, kind of already pointed out, but try and help you to find and fix vulnerabilities before a hacker does. So who are AppCheck? What are we? Um, again, some of you some of you may have heard of us, some, some may not. We're, we're an automated penetration testing tool. We detect the flaws and vulnerabilities in websites, web applications, external infrastructure. You know, we the tool was built and developed over the last eight years by a team of um, a team of large UK based manual penetration test testers. Some main technical features and um, I'm not going to bore you all to death just going through the product. I'll, I'll kind of brush over these quite quickly, but we cover the whole of the OS top 10 um, and that includes the new 2017 OS top 10 that some of you may be aware of. For the, for the people that aren't, um, the OS top 10 is just the, the, the top 10 web application vulnerabilities that are out there, okay? So they're the things that people get exploited on the most. SQL injection is number one. It has been for years and years and years. Um, and it is something that we see very often when we're running our, running our scans. Alongside that, cross-site scripting is something that we see within the tool very regularly. Um, this is, again, is something both vulnerabilities could, if exploited in the right way, lead to a data breach. With the tool, as I mentioned, you can have complete control or you can work with, with, with a company like Signation and let them help you manage it. But you've got the ability to schedule and automate these scans. So you can do this as much as you need to or as little as you need to um, and, and, and kind of use that to manage it and, and, and really get a really good idea of it year long round threat landscape rather than just once you know one snapshot in time we did de we detect for vulnerabilities on first print principles as well as known signatures so we can find zero days and we have done we found brand new vulnerabilities in the likes of um microsoft at t adobe and we've been accredited on their on their pages for finding those brand new vulnerabilities so not only will we find all the stuff that's up out there and that's constantly been released and things that are, that you'll know about, we can also find these um, these brand new vulnerabilities that, that may have never been discovered before. Um, and that is where it does get interesting for us as, as, as well as you guys. We do authenticated scanning, um, which is just, it says, you know, scanning behind the login portal, very, very important. And we can also do multi-stage platform scanning. So obviously for an e-commerce platform or anywhere where you've got a large number of forms, a lot of automated tools will fall down. What we developed, and obviously happy to show anybody this in more detail off, off the webinar, but we, we've developed a tool that allows us to go through a user workflow and scan for vulnerabilities as we go through that. So yeah, um, that, that is something that's quite unique to us. I, I've seen a couple of questions pop up, guys, and, and we will answer them at the end. So I, I'm, not, I'm not ignoring you, but we will, we will get to as many questions at the end once, once we've, got, we've got through the slides. Couple of other things we can integrate with them um, with other tools. Um, for example, Jira, Team City. Um, we've also got a customizable dashboard, and we can do internal scanning as well. Some of the organisations we work with. Um, so again, you can see that's just 
you know, some high profile names on there um, that we've helped along the way. And finally, my last couple of slides before I hand back over to, um, to, to Shadi. Um, so how can AppCheck help specifically within GDPR? So first, in the short term, um, basically, you can get an idea of what that a snapshot in time of what your security posture from an external perspective looks like. What is a hacker? What can a hacker see? You know, these people are constantly trying to um, attack websites nowadays. The large companies are having hundreds of thousands of attacks on a daily basis. So having a snapshot in time to see if you've got anything critical there, important, and then you've got a report you can show to the ITO that you've gone, look, we did this, we, we've shown that we, we checked it, and there wasn't anything that we could see of a massive risk. So there's number one. Secondly, to understand what services are available to organizations, that will enable, them to, um, enable to, you to mitigate as much risk as possible by testing re regularly. Um, so that regularity um, around, obviously, the, you know, not just a one snapshot, but doing this, and as new vulnerabilities are released, and as new threats are out there, you, you've got that side of things as well. Um, so I, I took, so to break that down before I hand back to Shadi, I'm going to just go short term and long term. Two last slides from me. Um, so short term, we will um, basically scan against all your web apps and external infrastructure, um, and you can remediate it against the G before the GDPR deadline. So obviously, before that deadline comes into play, you can have a you know, remediate as much as you possibly can. You've got unlimited amounts of scans, so you can test and then test again just to make sure your remediation is successful. And um, we've also, on the short term, we've got a new plugin that is brand new about to come out, which will actually highlight where a GDPR risk is within a vulnerability. So that's an extra plugin and um, something a little bit extra around that. Um, well, you've got support and, and, and advice from experts that understand this. Um, and unlimited reports as well. Long term, um, again, you're going to have these slides, so you'll have continuous scans over a, over a, any given period of time, whatever a year, two years, whatever it might be. Um, it, the, the tool is updated weekly, so you know if a new vulnerability is discovered, you can run a quick scan, make sure you're not vulnerable to that. And the main one for me um, is. With AppCheck, you will have the ability to back catalog all your scans over a given period of time. If you were to have a data breach, you could go to the ICR, as, as Shadi highlighted earlier at the very start about, you know, if you're showing that you are being proactive and you've tried, having a tool like AppCheck where you can go, look, we've ran all these reports, we've ran all these scans throughout the year, we were just unlucky. They're gonna sh it's going to make things, you know, it's going to shine things in a much brighter light than if you've done absolutely nothing on your websites and web apps. Because if that is somewhat, something that's critical to you and you do get caught on that and you've not got something where you can show you've been proactive around it, that, that's where you potentially, you know, potentially could, could get hit. So that's it from me. Um, obviously, any questions, I'll, I'll happily answer them at the end, but I'll hand back to Shadi now. Great, thank you, James. That, <laughs> that was great. Um, and yes, I agree with you. Um, using tools like AppShack and um, will will help organizations assess the risk of their web applications as well as their web infrastructure and identify any vulnerabilities um, that they need to address and how they can address it. In addition to that, um, Signation, as we are one of the top 10 innovative cybersecurity companies, according to the National Cybersecurity Center and the Department of Culture, Media and Sport here in the UK. Um, and we won these awards on our platform, which you see, Cyber GDPR, which is an auto, automated platform that helps organizations to assess their GDPR readiness from an operation perspective and how that. Um, interlink with cybersecurity um, into the organization. If you remember when we talked earlier about the data, data protection impact assessment, we said you do it to two uh, in a parallel approach to two areas. The first one is your business operation as well as your applications. Using tools like AppChat will focus on the application and using 
our platform, uh, such as our GDPR, will help you on the process. And it's quite an easy type of tool to use and, and go forward with it as it is more of a membership. Have I got control of the screen? Um, I think so, no. So it is more, exactly. So it is more of a clear path the platform will take any companies from understanding if the regulations fully apply to them or not, help them to build their readiness uh, and generate a report, which is an ICO accepted. Um, what is their current status? Do the gap analysis and identify what is the effort need to be done for the organization? And all of that happen automatically and then allow them to monitor that um, uh, the process and the compliance projects on a continuous basis. Uh, and the main idea is, if we look at the next slide, it will help the organization through an easy to use interface. So we have, as Inside Nation, with our expertise, um, who we sat actually on the early committees that wrote the first and the second draft of the regulations um, and, and built that where we actually classified GDPR into seven domains that they are business related and build an assessment that help organizations answer that process and be able to build a report and awareness of their current GDPR posture. Now the beauty of, of the tool that it's focused on building automated assessment that use relevant language to your industry. So what I mean with that, if you are into the financial sector, you will find that assessment is actually targeting other regulation, other standards, and speaking language that is related to uh, financial sector regulations from the FCA, uh, MIFID, Basel, BSD2, and PCI. If you are more on the e-commerce side, uh, and online payments, you will have PCI, uh, DSS, and other type of regulation. If you are on the health sector, um, and you are dealing with the NHS, you will find areas like cyber essentials for cyber security and information governance toolkit. So the assessments will be tailor-made under these seven domains to where do you are, and it will give you a quantification of your current posture, as well as a report that explain why you scored this number and what are the best steps to take to improve that. Now, the tool gives you a full, easy access, and it has a number of features that allow the organization to be able to use it. It gives you that logical step-by-step -step approach, the actionable insight, and I highlight, you know, emphasize on the highlight that it's a specific for your business environment. We've seen a lot of organization offering tools that they are not focused on that area. Um, and the last but not least, um, that tool will, will help you to be able to run in parallel with other tools such as AppCheck, vulnerability assessments, other tools that you are using for data mapping and monitoring your supply chain. And the tool itself will allow you to run that due diligence on your partner and your suppliers. And we have a number of uh, retailers and third-party organizations that they are actually using the tool to control the due diligence of their clients in that sense. And you can actually use a free version of the tool if you go to uh, sarreg.co.uk. It's available for free. Um, please use it um, and tell us what you think about it in that sense. And on that one, I would say, don't worry about GDPR, keep calm and may the GDPR be with you. Thank you very much. 
Excellent. Thanks, Shadi, and thanks, James, also. Um, we've had a few questions come through, and if you do have any questions for everyone else, um, do send them through in the chat box and we'll get to them now. Um, so the first one here is from John, um, and it's about legitimate interest clause. So I'll just read out what he said. Uh, Many marketing companies have blogs stating that B2B contact can continue as is to existing and new cold individual customers after May 25th as long as an opt-out option is included in the communication email. Note, uh, not an explicit opt-in request message. The loophole they are quoting is via legitimate interest clause, which to me is ambiguous at the very least. Hoping you can shed some light, please. Great question, John, and um, I'm happy that someone asked, uh, actually asked the question. Um, Yes, it is possible, but it's not about legitimate interest. Um, GDPR still on that area, there's a lot of grayness on it, let's say 50 shades of GDPR on that sense. However, there's another directive, which is called Privacy and uh, Electronic Communication, that under that directive, it's highlighted that for business communication and business emails, um, you don't need to get consent of the user. Now, yes, that is valid and you can do that as long as that exchange of the business email for was for the purpose of business communication. So if you are a marketing agency um, that you are marketing for certain type of activities or businesses, they, if they send you anything different than these type of communication, then they are in breach. That's one. Two, yes, you have to give them an opt-out option. Otherwise, you are compromised as well in that sense, or you are in breach of the regulation. Now, this is will continue till uh, 2019, where the new draft of this directive is actually being finalized and now into consultation at the EU, that will match the GDPR and then what well, that means this rule cannot apply anymore. So yes, you can do that from between now and the time that the new directive for privacy and electronic communication is in effect and we are expecting it based on the speeds at the moment of the push of that directive that it will be ready in 2019. And there's at the moment discussion as well to transfer that from a directive to a regulation, which means marketeers will have an extra layer of regulation that they need to address, but most of its principles and the draft that I have read match the GDPR. I hope that answered your question. Excellent. That's really um, that's really insightful. Thanks, Shadi. Um, a couple of people have asked if they can get the slides and recording, and yes. So we will connect everyone to our presenters, Shadi and James, today after the session. And in that email, we will also have a link to the recording with the slides included there um, and any other links, actually, to those two um, services. Um, so that is all good. Um, so a few other questions. A question from Rachel here. And I think this is for James. Is app check relevant to desktop websites or apps only? Yeah, that's that's a really good question as well. And um, so from our perspective, and um, that's I very briefly touched on in the presentation, but that's the internal side of things. So one of the big things for us um, is being able to scan inside the network as well as outside. So obviously there is that threat if an application has a vulnerability just because it's not open up to the web it still could potentially be exploited if someone was to gain access to the network. So what we do is we sit what we call an internal hub, which is just a VM that would sit in your network, and that would allow you to scan internal applications like desktop applications. And obviously, out of the box, ones like Microsoft and et cetera, you know, the benefit in scanning them, it, it becomes less because obviously these types of applications are getting tested all the time. But where it does become very useful is if you're um, scanning, uh, if you have, if you're developing um, app websites or web applications, um, that having that ability to scan within your network and, and scan them before they actually go live 
is, is, very, is very, very useful. So the answer, <laughs> the short answer is yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so it's obviously not just um, native apps or anything. I think digileaders.com, we did um, a security check as well, which proved really interesting. So I do recommend it as a free check there for everyone. Um, so a question from Emma here, um, just about Google Search Console. Would Google Search Console be able to scan for vulnerabilities also? Not sure if you guys know about that. Um, I'm not sure that Google Console will be able to scan for all vulnerabilities, but I'll leave that more to James as it's his area. Yeah, I, to be to be honest, I don't know a lot about it, but I'd have to look into it a little bit more. But my guess would be maybe they can look at some, but it, it all depends on the level of depth. And um, so if you are looking at a tool, that is one of the things that you want to check. Um, you want to see what level of depth it goes into, what types of vulnerabilities it can discover, because every tool is different. Every tool can discover, um, more, you know, some can discover more. For example, AppCheck is more specific around the website and web app side of things. Um, so that is kind of my, I guess, more generic answer. What I would be doing is asking that question um, and, and, and doing a little bit of research around it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but that, that's the kind of generic answer to that. Yeah, um, it, it, it might be useful if they can specify which console that we're talking about. If, if, they are, if their application or systems are based on Google Cloud and they are talking about Google Security Console, um, exactly what James said, it will scan the infrastructure on Google. Um, um, it's not a bad tool at all. It's decent, but it's only served internally in that sense. Um, using tools like AppCheck will help you to get that additional external view of how actually someone from the outside view you and view your infrastructure, if it was the Google Security Console. Um, other than that, I don't know. They do have a number of consoles, one for marketing, one for this. I think Emma... I think, Emma, if, you, if you're talking about the Google Search Console, I've done it before, and it's not very detailed, so it will scan your website, but um, comparing it to the AppCheck one, it doesn't give you that depth of information. Um, so moving on to another question here from Andrew, is there a recommended approach for cybersecurity in relation to being GDPR compliant? As an organisation, should we be looking at penetration testing and vulnerability scanning as a minimum? Um, um, yes, go ahead, James. You stop. No, I, I was just going to say probably more one for you, Shadi. But from from our pers from our perspective, it, you know what I would say is you need to speak to somebody like Shadi who can help you prioritize. But as a minimum, you would want to do something around that, um, and not even forget GDPR. Just just for just in general, really. Sorry, I'll hand that to you, Shadi. Really, that's more one for you. No, that's that's fine. I mean, yes, there is an approach, and that approach is um, internal, external, um, in that sense, and, and there's no order for them. What I mean is, because GDPR covers your technology, but it's also covers your business processes, so yes, hand testing is, is useful, vulnerability assessments are useful and important, they help you to know uh, whether you commission to build your website or your applications or are using different APIs and managing your hosting, if they are telling the truth. Um, and they're not, it's not necessary that they are lying, but especially when you're depending on the big organization, sometimes something slips their mind. And it's always useful to have that confirmation. And that's where you do diligence and duty to care. A duty of care where the ICO would like to see these evidence in order to tick the boxes um, and that is more on the external side but also on the internal side you need to run such of assessments um, and, and, and these assessments are very simple if, if you go and you look to uh, the National Cyber Security Center and the 10 steps that they have put for organizations to adopt on cyber security um, are quite useful from having your own hygiene. We all like to have our house clean and you know, um, and not dirty and not messy. And that is the main idea here on cyber. That's what you try to achieve. So it's it, there's no right or wrong answer. 
to be honest. It depends on the type of the business, whether you're going to start from the external, your web application and, and your web facing, and then move to the internal or the other way around in that sense. Excellent. Well, that, unless there is any other final questions, I think that pretty much sums up um, today's session. And as mentioned, we will send you the link of the full recording and also send you some other relevant URLs through to SciReg and um, the AppCheck um, offering there. So we will also connect you to Shadi and James. So if you have any other further questions or want to get in touch with them directly, you'll be able to do so by email um, later this afternoon, probably in a couple of hours. So thanks everyone for joining and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you everyone. Great, thank you everyone. I hope it was a, an interesting lunch break for you and hope to hear more from you and good luck with your GDPR.